Okay. Okay. Thank Please you. join me in welcoming Hendrik. Yeah. Thank you very much. <laughs> yeah. So as just announced, I will talk about software called OpenMaster Unit, uh, which was developed in Oldenburg uh, for quite some years, and um, yeah, and also uh, about its applications and a little bit about hardware. On the next slide. But um, first, let me try to control this thing here. Ah, here we go. Um, so the like the, the stage for the software is um, hearing research and hearing aid research, um, and the aim is to lower the barriers to use or to evaluate algorithms or methods, procedures for hearing, hearing aid processing, hearing support, and um, without the need to implement it in a real hearing aid, which is uh, quite effortful. So. Um, but it makes sense to evaluate algorithms in a full hearing aid processing chain, so uh, and not um, yeah isolated from from such a framework. For example, if you want to do um, signal enhancement and want to know what it brings for a benefit for the actual user, you have to use something like like a whole hearing aid. And um, yeah, this is the idea behind the software. So test new rules like um, gain prescription rules and new algorithms, maybe also in field studies, and also um, yeah, develop and test new um, concepts um, of hearing aid processing uh, with a more or less low barrier. Um, Open Master Hearing Aid um, is a software platform for signal processing, so it's dedicated to real-time, low-latency signal processing, takes care about some things to take in mind then, like real-time safety and configuration changes at real-time, which is important. But um, OpenMHA is not only this uh, software platform, so it's a whole software package which also um, contains um, several tools and um, also methods in forms of signal processing plugins that um, can be used um, like yeah from just from a software package. But this is also extensible. And to make the software usable to a research community, um, what we did in the last years quite a lot is also providing tools and manuals for the software and examples um, to enable researchers on yeah, different levels, so to say, to, to use the software. And we focused uh, on like two groups, uh, three groups that can also be overlapping, uh, which is research audiologists, uh, where we mean that this group just use software setups for um, psychoacoustic experiments, and then application engineers, which can use the software to build new systems that may be used by the other groups uh, later in experiments, and or the same person can be in, in both of the groups or in all three groups. The uh, third group is algorithms, algorithm designers. So um, new algorithms can be implemented in the software um, yeah, to test and evaluate them and also to compare them to existing um, approaches that are already available. Um, if you want to run the software, you're not um, bound to specific hardware, so it runs on all the three major um, operating systems, Win Windows, Linux, and uh, Mac OS, and um, also on ARM-based uh, platforms, which is in particular interesting for portable setups like Raspberry Pi-based or BeagleBone Black-based boards. But in principle, there's no need for specific hardware as long as you have some computational power available. And yeah, the current state is after a couple of years of development that we have some active hearing research community who is using the software for quite different things like more technical hardware related things, but also um, just as a hearing aid used in headphone experiments and also to test new algorithm. And the software is available under open source license. Um, this is an example hearing aid processing chain, which can or which is just like one of the examples which is available in the software. So just to give you an idea how a flowchart of what you can build with the software looks like. Um, so um, yeah, we have uh, here we have four microphone input, um, two microphones on each side, like an actual hearing aid, um, some calibration stage to make a yeah to build a bridge between the the hardware component and the internal calibration of the software. And then there are there is two um, temporal processing blocks. In this case, it's adaptive differential microphones um, for bilateral directional filtering. Um, then we have a block of sp spectral processing here um, with some binaural processing for uh, noise um, reduction and for the hearing loss compensation, the dynamic range compressor, and the frequency shifters there for feedback reduction. So this is yeah like a basic hearing aid processing chain, which can be 
used and modified um, as required in, in, yeah, in the given study, for example. To get control over these things, um, there's a tool set available in the software. So um, I just give you some examples here. So there are some tools available in MATLAB. For example, we have such a generic control interface, which can be assessed to, uh, which can be used to, to see or to monitor and modify every single parameter which is available in, in the processing chain, which is built in the, which was built in the software. And um, yeah, for example, here you just see a very little piece of this uh, configuration that I just have shown. So where you can modify, for example, attack times of your um, dynamic range compressor. And um, yeah, another tool is more for the hearing aid fitting, the gain prescription tool, uh, which is also runs also in MATLAB or Octave, um, where a set of available gain prescription rules can be used to fit a hearing aid, a research hearing aid um, to a subject. Uh, it's uh, when it's running real time. There's also an offline processing version um, available, and it also offers the possibility to implement new game prescription rules in MATLAB and make them available in the tool and test them with OpenMHA. So yeah, this is like the, the, um, uh, the view from the top, so how you control it. If you want to build a new thing so you can use these plugins and combine them to whatever Sigma processing chain you want to have, um, you have to, for the time being, you have to use some configuration language, which is a text-based thing. So here again is a small example snapshot, which is also available in, in, for download um, on GitHub, um, where a simple dynamic range compressor is, um, is configured. So you see some, yeah, some calibration parameters here. I hope you can see it and it's not too small. And um, then we have some settings for gain at 50 dB input level, 80 dB and so on. So this is quite simple thing, but yeah, you, maybe you can imagine that you can make these things also much more complicated if you want to use arbitrary um, gain prescription rules and that are not only um, fixed at um, certain input levels, which is also possible in the software. Um, yeah, so in the next, or, or like for the third group, uh, the algorithm developers, um, one tool set may be in particular of interest. So in, in principle, algorithms or new plugins can be implemented in C or C++ in the software. But this is quite a barrier for um, many of us, I would say, since, um, yeah, we're usually not programmers. Uh, and um, so... Um, we try to make this hurdle also a little bit lower and um, integrated some uh, or connected the OpenMHA with the MATLAB coder integration. So with the MATLAB coder, you can transform MATLAB code into C code or even in libraries. And uh, yeah, we have two options here to generate C code and compile with OpenMHA. So if you have a development environment for OpenMHA set up, you can just compile the code. And, or you can even compile the C code uh, using MATLAB in a library and then just load the library so you never have to touch C code when you want to implement some MATLAB uh, processing into um, OpenMHA. And also for this, there's a tutorial and examples available, so I will not show uh, any more details about this here, but um, yeah, so just to give you an idea about the, the feature set of the current or the current state of the feature set for um, extending the software. And um, yes, yeah, so the last list of features in, in this um, presentation is the connectivity of the software. So here you see the, the basic structure uh, with the MHA server. You can load um, plugins for signal in, input and output. And here you have some, some processing. And um, so here you see that you can communicate with the MHA server uh, through a TCP port from the outside. And um, this is, oh, sorry, how you con can control or how the tools I just have shown access the software. So you can just use a network connection and for example, terminal-based MATLAB Octave uh, Python or also um, uh, Node-RED system for um, designing other GUIs, for example, in smartphone applications um, to control the processing at runtime or to query parameters. Um, the other interesting 
arm here is the I.O. plugins. So audio can be uh, fed into the system through different way, uh, ways. So it can load files, for example, for offline. It can be used for offline processing, so where you can just process files. Um, you can use uh, the Jack Audio Connection Kit, uh, all the, um, the ISA driver and port audio is supported, and also the parser where you can directly fed um, audio samples into the system using the TCP connection, for example. And the third block here, um, which lives on the processing side here, is also um, data exchange, which is usually non-audio data. So you can also fed um, data into the system using open sound control format or um, the lab streaming layer framework um, to exchange, for example, movement data in your um, processing chain. Yeah, so that was yeah, a quick summary of the feature set and the tools. And on the next slide, I will show um, some um, uh, past, present, and, and future studies that we are running in Oldenburg. Mm, one example that was uh, carried out by um, Matje Hendricks uh, um, two or three years ago is um, the measurement of algorithm benefit in hearing aid algorithm benefit in realistic environments. And this study was about, um, or one part of the study was about measuring the impact of um, movements of subjects on hearing aid um, signal enhancement algorithms. And um, for this purpose, she measured movement behavior in different um, audiovisual virtual scenes. And later, using this trajectory, um, simulated this um, movement with hearing aid signals and then put uh, different algorithms in the chain. So directional microphones, beamforming, also the binaural noise reduction and the single, noise, uh, single channel noise reduction algorithm. And um, yeah, to measure how hearing aid would have um, affected the output signal to noise ratio if this movement behavior would be present in, in the given scene. The set of scene was six scenes, cafeteria uh, with two different tasks, a lecture hall, living room, and a street and train station. And now I will not go in the very details of the results here, but what you can see in these colorful dots here everywhere is at some times there is some benefit uh, of hearing aid algorithm processing in given with some given movement behavior and sometimes not or even a detrimental effect. And um, yeah, so one conclusion is that uh, head movement um, affects algorithm benefit, which was expected, but yeah, the study is much more detailed. But um, why I'm showing this study here is that the set of algorithms that was used in the study is also available in, in the OpenMHA software. So the, there's a reference implementation. And um, so everyone now could reproduce the processing and for later experiments um, use these data and these implementations to compare to this, um, yeah, to this reference study. And, but so far, we, this was a simulation study, in, so data recorded in virtual acoustics and um, results simulated on the, on, on the virtual um, hearing aid signals. And um, currently, we are quite interested in going in the field. So if you want to carry out a study like just described, you would need some setup like this. So this is from a bachelor's thesis, uh, which was conducted uh, last year, maybe this year, last year. And um, so you have to put quite some sensors on, for example, movement sensors. And here we have eye movement sensors and also some hearing aid to the subjects. This study was about um, the evaluation or the investigation of movement behavior in real, uh, yeah, in, in real outside scenes uh, or a real room and in simulated rooms. And the specific part here is that we have some portable hearing aid um, involved in this setup. And um, yeah, that's the next thing I want to introduce. So I have just said um, that OpenMHA is not specific to, to some um, hardware, but um, there's one hardware which is quite interesting for us as a processing platform for OpenMHA. And uh, together with our um, project partner, Just Pavlovich from Palo Alto, um, we, um, we made the so-called portable hearing lab, which is this piece of hardware and combined with OpenMHA, it makes the PHL. Um, we have a processing box here, which runs the optimized Linux system uh, that we distribute. And the yeah, most interesting part here is that we have this um, yeah, realistic or this hearing aid hardware, which 
um, has at the very end um, commercial hearing aid gear, so it can be used as a hearing aid or fitted to a um, to a hearing aid user like like a real hearing aid. Yeah, but you still have the cables here in the processing box, which on the other hand gives us the full flexibility that we have with Open Image A. And um, one interesting. Uh, question uh, was then, so if we have now this setup, so does it really um, behave like a hearing aid? And um, some colleagues from the um, German Institute of Hearing Aids, uh, DHI in, in Lübeck, um, answered these que questions by using some standard for the definition and verification of hearing aid features. And um, they built this um, graphical user interface here for the PHL, where you can set, set up all the parameters which you can usually set up when you fit a hearing aid, and um, then just measured um, technical features like latency, um, feedback uh, stability, maximum gain, and uh, things like that, and also compared it to a commercial hearing aid, and they concluded that for the metrics that they assessed, um, these hearing aid prototypes can be regarded as a um, yeah, suitable for research purposes um, as a replacement for commercial hearing devices, which was, yeah, like the first proof that we have some meaningful hardware and software system here. And um, this is also exactly what we did in a study um, in, in Hearing for All, um, where we used the PHL as a replacement of commercial hearing aids in hearing aid users. So this study uh, was about advanced fitting for in spatial complex um, acoustic environments um, with the idea that um, the fitting of a hearing aid uh, should also contain um, features like um, spatial signal processing. For example, if it's important to um, preserve binaural cues, this is a very individual thing, um, then this should be taken into account when a hearing aid is uh, fitted to a subject or a patient. And we have also set up some scenes here that uh, should be representative for everyday communication scenes. Um, we used virtual acoustics here, but we placed the subjects in the middle of this loudspeaker ring here and um, created scenes that consisted of, consisted of a speaker in, in the frontal direction, which was the target speaker in the speech intelligibility measurement procedure. And we had some interfering noises in terms of um, interfering talkers and a cafeteria background noise. So this led to different complexities, acoustic complexities of the scene, and uh, which were also reflected in SNR going from slightly positive to slightly negative SNRs. And um, on the PHL, we used the processing chain like this. We had, um, again, the dynamic compressor, which, we, which was fitted to the um, hearing impaired subjects um, using a loudness-based gain prescription rules. And we had four processing options here. One was no spatial filtering, so we just have the amplification based on the uh, gain rule. We had the binaural coherence filter. Um, the directional microphones and a fixed MVDR beamformer, which pointed to the frontal direction. And yeah, this is a snapshot of the results. So um, here you see the word scoring. So for the speech intelligibility um, over the acoustic complexity, which gets higher from left to right. So we have a decrease in performance from left to right. And the blue bars here show the um, performance of the 20 subjects, um, the medium performance and interquartile range if um, hearing aids were not present. And on the other side, the yellow one was what we measured with their own hearing aids, so the com commercial devices, and um, which we had to treat as black boxes in this experiment, but we want, just wanted to get an idea how a real hearing aid would, would perform. And clustered with these green boxes are the four algorithms that we used on the PHL or the four processing modes. And first thing I want, yeah, that you see is that it is somehow on a comparable level compared to commercial hearing devices, but there's also a lot of spread here. So there are quite some individual effects, which was actually this study about, but we were quite happy to see that the general level of performance is also comparable um, in terms of this psychoacoustic data. Okay, and in the last minute, I just I wanted to go, I want to go to the to the future, which is um, the current work uh, done in our group on multimodal hearing aid processing. The idea is to use um, behavioral analysis from head movement, gaze, and EEG um, to steer signal enhancement in a hearing aid, and um, 
The setup what we currently have looks like this. So we have a uh, um, EEG electrodes, the secret. Uh, Martin Weichner will talk about these uh, in the afternoon. And we have connected them with the PHL using this LSL um, connectivity feature so that we can measure brain signals while the hearing aid processing is running. And in the first concept study, we were able to measure um, event related potentials in different subjects in a simple auditory oddball experiments. And we also carried out time uh, tests so far. So we, we verified that we can measure some meaningful things based on the um, neural data. Uh, with this setup and the timing is also accurate so that um, because our goal is to do in the loop processing so where we can use the data in real time and it needs to be synchronized for that to manu manipulate the hearing aid processing at runtime. Yeah, so that was like the future directions. And of course, we're uh, in all these experiments, there's still a lot of stuff to do, but this is where we want to go. And um, yeah, if you want to check out Open Image A, you can visit our web page. We have a GitHub repository where you, where you can just get the software and all the examples and tutorials and stuff. And we also have a user forum, which can be used if there are questions about the software. So thanks for listening. <laughs>